Hey everybody, and welcome to the brand new Anna Break. I'm Jason. And I am Michael. And it has been a while, in both just doing the show, and just, Michael, you and I hanging out for a bit. How have you been? I've been okay, you know, just getting used to it and enjoying, uh, you know, the, 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 the fun that has been the uh, Oregonian and Portland area weather. Mm, keeping everything weird up there, both in the Between weather and Snowpocalypse in the 1 and Snowpocalypse 2, and... <laughs> Yeah, well, all the rain is up. That... Apparently, what's funny is the figures. The year I move up here is the year they decide that to have that Portland's drunken weather decides to go on a real bender, and uh, it's supposedly the worst winter, the, the, the harshest winter they've had in like twenty odd years. Just your luck, I guess. Meanwhile, I'm here in SoCal, special. you know, SoCal, it's you know, it's either rain or ninety five degrees, or rain or ninety five at the same time. Who, you know, it's all over the place. But it Welcome does to the tropics, man. Yeah. Well. But that's why we stay indoors, and that's why we watch anime, and that's why we wanted to restart, you know, at a break and get things going with that. So we're going to be uh, moving forward with the show. We're not going to really just focus on the news. We're also going to have, you know, reviews of series that you may have watched or you just haven't had a chance to check out. And we're going to try to encourage you either to or not to watch uh, certain series. Um, we'll also be talking about certain discussions. Like we'll find certain topics that are going that are pretty hot within the industry right now, and we we'll want to give our you know opinion and our uh viewpoint on our point oh two there we go that works for me but let's get into the news michael and you have some um i guess not so surprising news (laughs) oh yeah um (laughs) it has been announced sort of that uh miyazaki is coming out of retirement i'm so surprised i could have a heart attack and die from that surprise (laughs) which is not belittling Miyazaki in the least. I mean, it, the man is a genius. The man is the god, one of the, you know, he's just a god in anime. Right. Uh, he announced his retirement in 2013 um, after he did, uh, I forget the name of the film, but the one about the, the guy who created the Japanese Arrow. Um, and he, uh, but it hasn't stopped him from still doing creative stuff. He did a bunch of animated shorts for the Ghibli Museum, mm-hmm. uh, as well as a, a, a manga. Um, and apparently, he's already reported to be working on a storyboard for his new work, but no details have been released about it yet. Just that it's happening. Yeah, and that's the the weird thing is that before this announcement came out, he was actually uh, writing up this idea for this new CG short um, mm-hmm. that uh, was like I think it was like a little caterpillar or something like it was like this weird thing that only was going to be for the Ghibli Museum. Which, to try to get in, is almost nigh impossible because the tickets are booked, what, six months in advance or something like that? I heard, I heard there's like a six-month waiting list. It, it, it's yeah. some ridiculous thing at this point. But the, the fact that he's finally like, you know what, screw it, I'm officially unretired, I'm going back, and I'm going to work on a project. Does I mean, it, it's, is this more like this man, Miyazaki has uh, new ideas or he's not done? Or is it more along the lines of he wants to save Ghibli for whatever reason? I think it's a combination of both, honestly. Mm. I mean, he retires more often than Kiss does, um, <laughs> or the Rolling Stones, for that matter. You know, they, they, they've had how many farewell tours? Um, oh, yeah. It was... <laughs> same, same concept. But at least in the case of Miyazaki, we get some really cool stuff out the other end, not a singer who's losing his voice. Mm. So, <sighs> sorry, Paul Stanley, I'm looking at you. Um, I love you to death, but your highs are gone. Mm. Um but it's it's not surprising, but it's a good thing, you know. Um, I there's a special out there called Saving the I think it's called Saving the Kingdom. No, it's something to do with it's, something, it's got the word kingdom in it. It's basically a documentary on uh, Miyazaki that was done while he was working on the last movie. Mm-hmm. And it, they talk, they interview him. They interview. Did you know? Uh, interesting little bit of no, uh, of news. Um, oh God, what is his damn name? Oh, I forget his name. One of the guys from Gainax, who originally worked with Ghibli way back in the day, Mm -hmm. is the voice of the main... Goto. That's it. Hideki Goto. Is the voice of the main male character in the last movie he did. Really? I was not aware. Yeah. Miyazaki himself, he's like, you know, I want Goto to do it. And the guy's (laughs) like, why do you want Goto to do it? Because he's got this unusual way of speaking, and this is the way I see this guy speaking. So they, they they called him up, and Goto's like, hell yeah, I'm not going to tell you no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know? you, you don't tell him no. It's kind of like you don't tell Lasseter no. He becomes like, yeah, I want you yeah. to be a part of you know this thing for Pixar. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, where do I sign? Mm-hmm. Uh, how much of my blood do you want? So, but it's, if you get a chance, it's it's actually a really interesting, beautiful thing 
and you get an idea of Miyazaki's headspace. It's okay. definitely worth watching. Um, it, I found it on, I think Netflix. It's either on Netflix or Hulu. I don't remember which. Okay. But 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 you know when it comes to anime and 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 all this other stuff in the modern age and him doing CG shorts, let's go ahead and roll that into the streaming industry and uh, the latest info from a company that started a little less than legit but went legit and became and, uh, insanely you know popular and successful since then. Yeah, uh, we're talking about of course about Crunchyroll. Um, they have had a spectacular past, I would say, few months. Uh, they hit their 1 million subscriber. They announced their own expo. Um, they uh, had some big giveaways going on. Like, things have been going good for them. Um, aside from also getting, like, what was like a $100, $150 investment from the, the churning group uh, about a year like ago. $150 million investment? It was something. It was like, it was $100 plus million. You said $150. And I'm like, that's not oh, much, sorry. dude. $100, $100 to $150 million. <laughs> okay. I'm correcting myself at this point. Um, but recently, uh, there's been a rising amount of comments uh, regarding the drop in video quality. And I've kind of noticed it myself here and there. Uh, Crunchyroll has finally responded to this publicly by stating that um, they are currently releasing new episodes in their new infrastructure to test basically the system's ability to uh, handle uh, all of their new content. Now, while they have identified some issues with uh, their current in encodes, they already stated that they will be moving everything to their new system because aside from the encoding issues, it seems to be able to handle the bandwidth necessary so all of you out there can actually watch Crunchyroll simultaneously. Um, in high quality. And that's the thing is that once they finish this transition over to the new infrastructure, they're actually going to re-encode all of their catalog uh, at the higher quality uh, level. That's no small feat, considering the size no, of their catalog. No, it's considering everything they've got. Right. I mean, and it's grown dramatically, even in the past month and a half, since they announced that deal with Funimation, to where it mm -hmm. was... Um, well, they're getting like Funimation's entire catalog now, right? Right, because they had the deal that all the subtitled stuff will go over to Crunchyroll, all the English dub stuff will actually go over to Funimation. So it's an interesting partnership they have going on there. So, Well, and, then it, and it would save Funimation some money on their streaming service, so... Mm -hmm. No, it does make sense on on both aspects, and plus they're going on with their their VRV thing. But we can get into that a whole nother um, yeah, it's a know, whole episode. episode. Yeah, but let's talk about some uh, some movie news. Um, it is anime based, but it's a U.S. film. Michael, what are we talking about? Oh, you're talking about James' new project, James Cameron's project that isn't Avatar two, uh, or three, or four, or the lands and at, at Disney World, or the lands in Disney World. Yeah. Um, James Cameron, Cameron promised a long, long time ago, and he's hinted at doing a personal project of uh, directing a live-action version of Battle Angel Alita, mm -hmm. which is a very, very classic manga and anime. Um, well, apparently filming already wrapped. It started in October of 2016, and given that it's March of 2017, that's less than six months of shooting. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. Um Casting information has only recently been released. It's supposed to star Rosa Salazar in the lead role of Alita, along with many other stars, including Christopher Waltz, Jackie Earl Haley, I'm going to butcher this name, Mahershala Ali, mm -hmm. Ed Screen, and Jennifer Connelly. That name I won't screw up because I love that woman. <laughs> um, film's currently scheduled for release July of 2018. I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm cautiously optimistic about Ghost in the Shell too. But we we can have a whole conversation about that. That's a whole uh, discussion. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually see the movie, then we'll yeah. talk. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to that point. Um, but yeah, um, I'm curious that they have. You know, it's cool to see they have a, a very diverse cast. And the only reason I know how to call it Mahershala Ali is because he was at the the Oscars a, a, a while back, and that's the only reason why I know how to say that one correctly. Uh, some other well, glad one of us can. <laughs> Uh, some other people that, that joined on this um, was actually uh, Michelle Rodriguez is in this as well. So, nice. Well, yeah. she's done a lot of anime voiceover. so That she has. So having this diverse cast with uh, a series, can we really call it a beloved series? I mean, I know you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed it. But if you asked most general I don't general know that we fans, could really call it a series because wasn't it originally an OVA? Originally, I believe, an OVA, yes. And then there's the manga. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm consciously optimistic because of the fact that Cameron actually gave a sh gave a crap about it, you know. That's true. Um, but we I at the same time, 
so many people have done so many wrong things with titles they supposedly loved. So yeah, I'm looking at you, Mister Blip Base Explosions and Transformers. <laughs> um, He's finally stepping away from that too. Or That's the a... Turtles, for yeah. that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, which actually wasn't as horrible as everybody said it was, but it certainly wasn't awesome. <sighs> um, the uh, so yeah, no, it's it's I'm, I'm I want to be cautiously optimistic, but the history to, yeah. of U.S. firms taking on um, an anime you know, franchise or a manga franchise and, mm-hmm. you know, taking their own spin on it. I mean, do I have to bring up Dragon Ball Evolution again? Or Well, true, but Dragon Ball Evolution was... Wasn't that Shyamalan? I, I believe, no, I forget who it was. No, Shyamalan had uh, Avatar the last Oh, no, he had Avatar. He screwed yeah. up Avatar, that's right. So, <sighs> I, Avatar Airbender, not Avatar. Cameron's Avatar. I, mean, I will say this, at the very least... It will be a fun popcorn flick, just because that is what James Cameron does. Oh, Cameron does, yeah, he does epic popcorn flicks. Yeah, so. he'll be perfect- nothing else. It'll be that. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so we'll have to see. Fox currently yeah. has it listed, like Michael said, uh, released J- July twentieth, twenty eighteen. We'll see if that changes here and there, with especially with Cameron's uh, uh, ties to all the rest of the Avatar sequels that are you know. Well, ties to the sequels and c- competing against Star Wars and Marvel for yeah. release dates. So we'll have to see with that. But um, the last, but, even though we're not getting a live action uh, version of Ava, we are getting something else. Close en- <laughs> enough for this prize. Um, uh, yeah. Wanfest happened a, a couple weeks ago, and there's already been a ton of great, you know, footage that came out of it. But some uh, nice uh, prototypes for some figures and some just other collectibles you can, you know, spend all of your hard-earned cash on. Probably what you shouldn't, but you still will. Um, but at their Wandfest booth, a uh, company called Prime One Studio uh, unveiled a brand new Evangelion statue that was sure to drop Jaws for a number of reasons. One, it's huge. It's like two it's and a half huge. foot tall. Um, I mean, compared to the usual figures that are about, mm, about that big, you know, two and a half two foot tall is kind of huge compared to that in, in scale. Yeah. Yes, there are one one scale people uh, figures out there, but yeah. <laughs> Not talking about well, those. Most of those are in theme parks. <laughs> Very true. Um, but this one is uh, will feature Ava Unit 1 running through a ruined Tokyo skyscape carrying a gun. It looks impressive. Alternate think... arms, alternate heads. Yeah, the, the full it nine on up. this. Um, downside, though, it's pricey. It's about 135,000 yen. About $1,200 US. Yeah, yeah. It's not... the. I, don't, I think it was Sideshow... Is, is is distributing a lot of Prime One stuff here in the states. Oh, are they? Yeah, I was not aware of that. And, uh, That's dangerous. They uh, they sent an email out about it the other day, and uh, Nikki and I were talking about it. We're like going, "Oh my God, it's pretty!" But oh my God, twelve. It's not twelve hundred bucks, pretty. Yeah. Well, it, well, let me ask you this then: If having just Ava Unit 1 wasn't enough, did you see the prototypes for Ava Unit 2 and Ava Unit 0 as well? I did not see the, I did not see those. They, they only they showed were, Ava 1. They showed those, but in unpainted form. Uh, okay, you see so Ava cats. Unit 0 holding the giant missile like you know, uh, like it did uh, in the series, and Ava Unit 2 is holding dual guns, uh, blasting away and probably at some angel. So you do have nice. other options out there. I'm sure they'll also cost around $1,200. So after shipping, you're looking at about Four grand for the set. If you order it from Japan, yeah. If you order it from in the states, like there's like I said, Sideshow Collectibles has been doing a lot of the Prime One distro lately. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna save some on the shipping, but you're still paying twelve hundred bucks a figure. <sighs> I mean, I've known people who spent a, a lot of money on figures. Um, I myself have spent a small fortune on it in the past so i've i've done it nikki's done it yeah mm-hmm. no we've done it but we haven't gone that high we no. we we've stayed in the three digit realm yeah i, I can't imagine going Barely. beyond that for a single figure I've got much yeah. better things i can buy for it at that point but that's just me um, but that's going to be it for the news for this round. Uh, we'll be ha- uh, updating this every single episode with uh, the latest articles coming out of Japan, dealing with anime, manga, video games, and just anything dealing with the industry itself. But we also want to talk about either just some big topics or series review. And uh, for this first episode, 
I'm thinking Food Wars. What are you thinking, Michael? I'm thinking I'm hungry. <laughs> Dude, there has not been a series like this that has made me so hungry. There have been other series that has focused on food and cooking before, but right. there's just that little little bit, little je ne sais quoi or something like that. That's, it has a little aspect. I'm just going to call it as... Um... I love that you went with je ne sais quoi. Yes. Um, well, it it kind of it... fits, given with everything that happens in Food Wars. Do you not agree? Well, especially with the heavy French bias in some of it. Um, yeah. Well, there's like several episodes of bias on French food and then Italian food and the Aldinis. And... Mm-hmm. It's a great show. It it It's, it's one of the few shows about it's proof that anime can make anything interesting if you do it right. Very true. Um, I mean, it's about a kid named Soma who his dad owns a uh, family eatery in Tokyo, in a, one of the pre- subsets of Tokyo. And he's a really good, his dad's a, a, an excellent cook. He's a really good cook. His dad goes off around the world every now and then to go learn new things and, 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 and recipes and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, to enhance his skills, as it were. Um, and they hint at how good his dad is in the first couple episodes when he's over in New York and a, and a Buddhist monk, come, or a Tibetan monk, mm-hmm. you know, comes in there, you know, and all his people are dragging on him saying, you know, no, no, remember your vows, you're supposed to be fasting. He's like, screw that, I must have his food. <laughs> you know? uh, this guy's that good. Um, and he ends up sending his kid to while he's on his next trip, he closes down the shop and sends his kid off to this elite cooking school uh, in Japan. Mm-hmm. Turns out he went to that cooking school as well. And then there's other stuff that gets into spoiler territory, so we'll stop there. Right. But he, it's all about his growth as you know this extremely talented young cook and his growth through the process of becoming a chef mm-hmm. and finding his specialty and whatnot. And some of the side, I mean, it wouldn't be anime without bizarre side characters. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, just way too many to count. I mean, there's always the, um, you got the super shy character, you got the, some of the usual tropes, the super shy, shy, super shy character. You have the I'm from the United States wearing almost nothing and giant boots yeah, and yeah, tan the, skin. Yeah, the brash American. Um, you have the people who uh, flip on a dime, uh, like they'll be very timid and whatnot, and then they'll say put on a headband, and all of a sudden they're like the fiercest. <laughs> You know, I love that character around. so yeah. much. I love so there Kurotima. are all these characters <laughs> that you can enjoy. There's all there's at least one character there that you can relate to and you will enjoy watching. Well, you'll you'll enjoy watching all of them. Um, and there are several points where it's way over the top, especially when they start tasting the food. And that's I think where the big thing that people it's like when it first came out, people were going, "Wait, is this food porn or is this is that all that this has?" Because <laughs> um, yes, uh, there are scenes that happen in this series. Um, where people are judging, um, you know, Soma's uh, are uh, cooking, and they have a, like a near orgasmic experience, and they go kind of bizarre at that too. And they have these bizarre visuals to go with it, mm-hmm. and it's it, it's beautifully animated. It's it's and and these things they do. I mean, there's one that he does where uh, it wasn't Soma's food that did it, but it was the guy he was fighting against in this quote unquote food war, which is the, their competitions. Mm-hmm. Um. Where they have the, this guy's known as the Prince of Legumes or something like that, or the King of Legumes or something like that, mm-hmm. um, and he makes his cabbage roll. And so these things he makes with these cabbages, the people who are testing it each go through this whole transformation sequence, and become magical sailor cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! And yes, one of the ones in a dress is a guy. <laughs> That episode was so damn funny. Oh, it was great. Oh, I mean, all, all, all of them are hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's like there's other ones here. The, the squid, the with the squid and the oh, peanut butter. Yeah. Um, that was actually an early on one. Um, that was like the first or second episode. Being wrapped in meat juices and. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Those it... weren't the only juices flowing, but I'm not sure. Um, it's yeah, no, it's it's a great show. It's worth seeing. Mm-hmm. There's only two seasons of it out currently. Rumor has it season three is going to finally hit this year. Uh, that is the, um, the rumor. There is an OAD coming out uh, July 20th of this year. Um, just probably just a quick OAV, probably 30 minutes long. I haven't had much de- many details. Uh, it's an OAV, it better be longer than 30 minutes. Uh, we hope it'll be longer than that. It's an OAD. It'll be out, it'll be out uh, in July. So no word yet about season three confirmed, I should say. 
Um, but is one the can original hope... video, is the original animation going to be a continuation, or is it going to be the usual what they usually do with OAVs, where they retell the story in the first episode? Uh, it's sounding like it's a side story, something that's happened in the in the manga itself. Now they did follow okay. the manga pretty close, and yes, all of these um, let's call them food pleasure scenes. Um, they. Uh... <laughs> Uh, they actually existed in the original manga itself. And the reason being for that is the, you know, the manga caught behind this before he started on Food Wars used to do hentai. So it kind of made sense. Oh, for that, him well, there you go. That explains everything food, right there. All, all of this. But it literally is food porn. If you were worried about, oh, it's just focusing on these lewd scenes and that's it. No, you actually will learn like tips about how to cook actual yes, meals yeah. like uh, and how foods processed are, are you know how you, how you prepare certain things and there are um i was talking with nikki about this a while ago there are people who have actually taken those recipes and figured them out in yes. the real world and There's, posted how to make them yeah there are full websites you can go out and find the actual recipes make it yourself and then rewatch that episode while you're what you know you're uh, consuming while you're enjoying it yeah. yes um, well like the, for example the karaage he makes in mm-hmm. the one episode when he goes against the fast food chain yes i want to learn how to make that that I have sounds yet to awesome. find that ep- that epi- uh, that recipe online yet i'm sure it's out there somewhere if someone out there has found it please you know let us know it would be put it uh, in the comments because we really want down there. We really want to know. Mm-hmm. I want that recipe. Um, but <laughs> aside from you know the again with those um, over the top scenes, there's less of them in season two, but that does not make it any less enjoyable. Uh, they're can, also, but they're more impactful in season two. They are. And they, they they serve. They're, they're not. They're um, they weren't really gratuitous in the first season, although they got a little over the top in a couple of them. But right. they're not overly gratuitous gratuitous they're they, they serve really a fast. point yeah they, they definitely serve a point and they move a lot faster than they did in season one season one it would take like two maybe three episodes to go through okay these mm-hmm. two people are 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 dueling uh then it's a uh, prep work and then oh uh, a, a personal crisis happens and then they finally get to start cooking and then they finish cooking and then the next episode they finally get judged and then you find out later on who actually won yeah. In season two, that happens all in like the span of a single episode. <laughs> a but, lot of it, yeah. But I'm happy for that because you spend an entire season pretty much on you know the the getting to know the characters and getting and the, getting the feel for the song. And now we're getting in beyond that and finding different types of skill sets and getting new friendships involved and finding new ways to create. Um, just beautiful food. So I I cannot praise it enough. Will I say it's yeah. for everybody? I'm saying the certain, uh, I'll, I'll go back to the food pleasure scenes, will probably turn off um, uh, some people. But if you can get past that and just enjoy for the ridiculousness of it all. Yeah, if you, I mean, those scenes are there for comedy. They're yeah. not, they're, I mean, yeah, okay, they're kind of fan servicey, but not really. Right. I mean, they're, they're no more fan servicey than Mito. I mean, yeah. N- uh, Nikumi, is, on her, which is her nickname, is fa- walking fan service. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> But even so, I mean, some of the stuff they do, and then or like when um, uh, Tarakoro finally shows a skill she's really good at that nobody can touch her at. Mm-hmm. The sense of accomplishment that you feel for her when she does that. Yeah. I mean, you get it. You can't help but get invested in these characters. And you have plenty of of time to watch them. Uh, seasons one and two are currently available on both Crunchyroll and Hulu. Um, subbed, even subbed, yes. Um, but we did, like again, we talked earlier. No official word yet of season three. Just little tidbits here and there. We have the original animation coming out this July, but that's basically it. I want season three. I know you do as, as well, awesome. Michael. Many other people do. We just yes. have to uh, wait and see at that point. So, have you not watched it yet? You definitely want to give it a shot. Please do. You won't. You won't be disappointed. And like. <sighs> I really can't say anything more about about this series. Just just go watch yeah, it. no, it, it it's it's yeah. We can go on tangents forever about all the, all of our various bits and scenes and mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but you know, although it does make me want to explore how to use a mezzaluna or mezzaluna. That's mm. we'll keep that for another yeah. episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to figure out how to do that without chopping my fingers off. Yes. 
All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this episode. It's a little brief, but we want to give you a taste of what to expect from Break 2.0 going forward. Uh, you will have new episodes on our YouTube page. Um, you will also find ways to contact us via social media. You can reply back to the video comments. Uh, you also have an email address. You guys can go ahead and contact us. If you have a series you want us to review, if you have a topic you want us to talk about, if you have just suggestions on what you want us to cover on the show, we will take that all into consideration. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And there's and, and among the series we, we're looking to, I mean, our, the series we're going to cover we're going to cover are going to be a spectrum. You know, you'll have some harem anime, you'll have some some sci-fi stuff, some heavy mm-hmm. stuff, some way out there stuff. The titles we've been ta- bouncing back and forth uh, range from Durara to Tenchi Muyo. Mu- Tenchi Muyo, God, I should know that series. <laughs> Ranma One Half, uh, or even uh, we're not doing Dead Man Wonderland. Get that idea out of your head. <laughs> You are um, never gonna let that down, are you? I'm, you're never gonna live that sucker down. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, God. various things. I mean, we we love to talk about Macross, although it's really hard to find good Macross here in the states without crossing legal lines. Right. Um, <laughs> Armory Gold, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you have ideas you want to see, uh, please let us know, mm. and and we'd love to we'd love to consider it, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. And again, just spread the word. If you guys want to support us, all we're really asking for is just let a friend know. Share this video. Embed it on a website. Or just tweet it out or, or whatever have you. We want yeah, to, we're to, get, to do a Patreon. <laughs> considered it moving forward. We want to make sure we get the, the idea down path. We want to get it right first. Exactly. We're not going to have you guys, you know, even request the uh, possibility of you guys pay for something that's still a work in progress. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So yeah, we, need, we need to refine it, and we want your help to do it. Aw, uh, so... All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out for this first episode of Anabreak 2.0. I'm Jason. And I'm Michael. And we'll see you guys next time. Have a good night, everybody.